Today we're going to be installing a trunk kit, power trunk kit on a 2018 Model 3. We get this kit from Hand Show. It's actually a pretty cool little kit. There's a couple other manufacturers out there that make these. This is just one, one variant. These are all the parts. The wiring harnesses, power cables, the soft close actuator. That's a pretty cool little kit. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start in the trunk. Now, installing this kit, there's multiple ways to do it. The instructions say to do it. Um, different, diff there's different manners. You could take out the tail lights and run the wire through the tail light holes. Uh, a lot of them tell you to come down and go underneath the gasket. The problem is when you go do this stuff, when you go through the tail light hole, uh, you create a, a water ingress point where this is right where the water comes down for the rain. So if you put the, the wire through the, the tailgate, tail light hole, it, you lift the gasket up, which will cause water intrusion through that hole. Um, I don't like doing that. Not only that, but the hole is really small and it's a sharp, sharp corner. I'll show you when we take the tail lights out, you, you can cut the wire. The other problem, the one way they tell you to do it is to bring it down, lift this gasket up, and bring the wire up over the pinch weld, and then put the gasket back down on it. I don't like that way either because you're pushing, when you close the trunk, you're pushing on this gasket, which is then cramming the wire up against the sharp sheet metal. And eventually it's gonna cut through the wire. And especially if you have a soft close actuator on here, it's gonna push down hard every time. I've seen a lot of these kits come in that somebody else did to the install, or they did it towards the way the instructions say to do it. And a lot of times it's blowing fuses because of this. Uh, I do it a completely different way. I take the bumper off. On the passenger side, there is a hole that you can go through that's got a grommet in it already. You can just go through that grommet. On the driver's side, I make my own hole. And the reason for that is because the, the hole that's available over there is not available over here. Because in the US, they use that hole for the charge port drain. There's actually a drain tube that comes through it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole myself, but I will seal it with a, uh, a sealing material so the water won't intrude into the vehicle. And it'll be down low enough so the rainwater is going to be coming down through here, not through the hole that's over here on the side. So it's a lot safer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these taillights out, and we're going to take the bumper off, and I'll show you how to run it down that way. Okay, so first I'm going to remove these uh, gas struts, and we're going to put the power struts in so we have the wire to route around when we take the bumper off. First thing you're going to do is take a pocket screwdriver, lift this clip out, and just wiggle that off. You gotta be careful because the edge of the glass is right here, so if you pop this too hard, you can hit the glass and you can crack it. So you don't wanna do that. Peep, can you hold that? Actually, pull this one off just like that. And then the install is quite simple. Route the wire down low. Clip that on. Make sure this upper piece is facing the right direction. And you lower it down and in, clip it in like that. We're gonna do the same thing with that side. Okay, I got it. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with this side. Make sure the wire is tucked down. That. So you gotta rotate that. Yep, and I will. You may need an assistant to do this because you have to hold the trunk lid up. So next we're gonna do is take the tail lights out because there's a bolt underneath there to remove the bumper. And then we're gonna pull the bumper off. Okay, so next we're gonna remove these bump stops. I've got a little custom tool here. Okay, this is just 3D printed socket. Okay, next we're going to lift up this load floor. We're going to pop this trim piece off because we have to snake wires around. And then we're going to get in here to the, remove the tail light. You don't have to take all that off to get the tail light off, but it makes it easier to show the carpets kind of behind this. So what we do is you lift up on this trim and work your way over. Pull that out. 
And there's a clip here. Take the clip out. Right. Now you have a little bit more room to get in here. And so it's two eight millimeters on the, each tail light. And then there's an electrical connector up in here. You squeeze the connector, pull it out. Now we're gonna move two eights. Two, don't drop them. And then you get these tail lights out. Now they're clipped in on the side. So if you can get the charge port door to open, sometimes, maybe. That's all right. Give it a little manual. Grab and pull. That's it. The tail lights out. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And the reason why I'm removing these clips, it's not really for carpet access. It, it helps, but I have to run wires all the way over to the side to do the module. And by taking that out, now you can get the wires through back here. Go after this one. Same thing on this side. So this side doesn't open, at least here in the US it doesn't open. So I grab up here, give it a little pull back, and lift up a little bit, and that comes out too. You gotta be careful these things break. So here's our bolts, two upper bolts for the bumper, and then there's a bunch on the side. up and get underneath. So next we're gonna have to get at this Torx bolt right here. Right there is one side, there's one on the other. So here we are in the bumper. There are this one, two, three push clips per side. And then we're gonna take a couple of screws out. There's two hidden ones. There's one here, one right here, one right here, one here, and these two over here. I'm gonna take those out. Okay, now, so we're gonna pull this bumper off. Just pull this out. There's gonna be a clip that falls out. That's okay. This clips onto the bumper after. Pull this out. Come on to this side. Pull this corner out. Again, the clip. Pete, would you like to grab that side? Yep. Okay, so you unclip, pull back, unclip that. So down, PDC connector is right here. There's a locking tab on this. You have to slide this back and squeeze and release. And we got the bumper off. So here we have the bumper off. This is the body plug I was talking about. It's painted uh, the body color. Um, you can use this one for, for this side. On this side, it's in use. This is a drain for the charge port door. Now, if you're in Europe, this would be in that hole over there, and this one would have the body plug in it. So depending on which country you're in, what side your charge port is, is on, I should say, um, we'll determine which one of these you can use without drilling. What I do is there's right below here, there's a little dimple right here in the paint. That's the one, that's where I would drill into to run the wire. And it's far back enough where the water, it would only come down this way. If you notice, this is all nice and clean. So less water intrusion coming down this way. And we said, you don't have to install it this way. I like a clean install. This is the way I do them. Okay, so I take the wire. This is for a clean look, proper routing, what have you. I send them underneath the taillight bracket. 
That way it keeps the wire tucked in the corner. And there's a hole down here. So that's where I would zip tie it through. So what I do is I run this nice and neat. I figure out my routing. And snug that down. Keeps the wire taut. And then I cut a hole in this, but I leave a drip loop. So when I say drip loop, that is is taking this wire, bending it with a loop, sharp loop, and going that way. So if water does come down this line, it traces the wire and drips down here, and it doesn't drip into the car. What we can do is I'm just gonna cut a little hole in it. This is rubber. It's not a big deal. They just threw paint on it and they're painting the body. Okay, so what you can do is just pop this out. So I cut my slices in there. It's a little easier sometimes in your hand. I'll try to feed it through. Feed this wire through. Like I said, drip loop. Pre bend that so it sits nice. Push that back in the body. And you can throw some sealant on that, and you're good. Now, this side, we're going to do the same thing. This time I'm going to drill a hole for an access. Like I said, you don't have to do this. I like doing it, especially if you plan on keeping the car a long time and you don't want your kit shorten out. So what I have here is I have a grommet. Protect from the sharp sheet metal edge. I can go to drill the hole. I'll feed this through and I'll use a sealant on it to seal up the gap, any gap I have. This is more to protect the wire from chafing getting cut through. So I'm going to drill a hole here. I marked my bit, the diameter of that. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use a unit bit. I pre-marked it so I know how far to go in. And the other thing I want to do too is reach in here and make sure that there's nothing behind it. You know I'm here because I'm wiggling the drain. There's nothing there. People are like, well, what happens if you want to remove the kit? Then you have a hole. Well, that grommet I had on the other side, you can order that from Tesla and drill this hole a little bit bigger and put that grommet back in this hole and it'll fit. That's why you make it the, almost the same size or a little smaller. So now what we're going to do is we're going to feed these wires through the hole. Just big enough. here. Look at that. I already nicked it. Just, just, it didn't hurt it or anything, but just to let you know how sharp that really is, that's why I'm using a grommet. I need a plastic tool to push this in. Go. 
There we go. Much better. Just like that. Bend that sharp 90. So you have, now you have a drip loop, and I will fill that in with some sealant. So I did I sealed that. I sealed that one too. So no water leak. Now we're gonna put the bumper back on and continue on with the install on the inside. Okay, so let me just put this back on. So what we need to do is make sure you can connect that in. And lock, don't forget to lock the tab. And then, push this back on. Line that up. Line that up. Yep. Clip. Beautiful. Okay, so here's the where the clip goes in. See so this piece right here that I just moved? That's the bumper. And then there's the tab that the screw goes through. These clips have to go in upside down like this at a slight angle. And the screw goes through all that. Just like that. And just do the same thing on the other side. Very nice, very nice. Now that we installed everything in the bottom, go up top, bring the car down. So now we're gonna reinstall these taillights. Pretty much just line up the holes in the sides and clip it in. It should pop. And put the eights back in on the inside edges. Okay, make sure you connect the taillights. The thing I was going to point out is uh, when you, if you do it through the taillight hole, see how small this hole is? It's not very large. And then if you bring the taillight over, you look at it, the size of this connector, you have just a little bit of space between the connector and the body line. So if you were to take that wire and try to stuff it in there, you're going to pretty much pinch it against the sharp metal edge. And eventually it'll, it'll chafe through or pinch the wires internally. It's not a really good choice. Uh, if you do want to do it that way, it's up to you. I recommend bringing the wire to the bottom of the, the hole. So that way the water, if it drips, it comes down through the top. The hole will be, the gap in the gasket will be down here in the bottom. Water doesn't travel uphill, so that'll seal it. Don't do it on the top. Plug that in. That's our main. Oh, now we're going to run the wiring. So this. The module's going over here in the right rear corner. It's going to go up right around on the, the radio amplifier. So we need to get that wire over here. We also need to get this carpet away so we can do the soft close catch. Retain the screws. We're not going to use that. You will have to readjust this, but it's not that hard to adjust. Okay, move the carpet away. It's that simple. Bring this wire through that way. This should reach the module without an issue. 
and then we're gonna put the soft close in. All right, so here's our soft close actuator. Like I said, there's multiple variations of this kit. Depending on the manufacturer, this may look different. Um, also placement may be different because this one's long, but it's thin. The other ones are, are, are much shorter, but they're much larger. So depending on which one it is, uh, I put them in different spots. This one's gonna sit in the, in the left-hand corner of the trunk behind the carpet. And it's just double-sided taped on with this foam tape. Okay. Do is push the carpet back enough. And slip it in there vertically like that. And we're gonna run our wiring over with the trunk wiring at the same time. So I'll go over that. What I'll do is I'll make this clean and I'll zip tie all the stuff together. And we have this end, so don't kink this. You want to keep it as smooth as possible. Nice round curves. And this just gets bolted back into place here using the existing hardware. Now the thing is, this is this is adjustable. Like I said, you, you have to readjust your trunk, which is not that hard. The easy way to do it is to guesstimate where about it is by closing the trunk lid, figuring out where the pin is, snug it down, and then fold down the seats from the back seat. The flashlight looked this way. You can easily move this latch the way you need to be. You can also mark the original, but that's not always going to be the case. I'm just lightly snugging because this will have to be adjusted anyways. But um, if you mark it, this, this moves. So even if you mark it, it's still not gonna be exactly where you need it to be. So you will have to adjust it no matter what. So I'm gonna route all three of these together. So I have the two harnesses and the cable. I'm just gonna tie them together with cable ties. Very nice and neat and clean. Okay. And the module is going to be installed in the right rear corner, so all the wiring is going to go over that way. the side back together. All comes back in. Beautiful. Put these clips back in. Okay, next we're gonna have to get in this corner and pull this carpet out. Uh, we need to remove this upper trim piece here. We need to snake one wire up through this harness and the trunk lid for the push button and the other harness is going to go towards the inside uh, this kit requires us to go to the main trunk harness which is behind the rear deck lid the other kits they'll come through this harness up into the, the trunk lid it, like I said depending on the manufacturer you get so this trim piece is clipped in but it also has two push pin clips this one right here down, pull out. Now we have access to the right rear. Now this carpet curves around the bottom, so uncurve it. Just May get caught in the supple for like that. There you go. Get that out. 
because the module is going to be mounting here and we need to run the wiring up the harness this way some to the front some to the trunk so here we have our module and this is our wiring harness this one's your power and ground this one is all the everything else this is for the signals everything it's all labeled nice on this one again depending on the manufacturer it's all labeled To do a little pre wiring before I install the module, untangle all your harnesses. So you, I like to make sure I have all the orientations and everything the right way before I put this in there. So I figure out which way it's getting mounted. This is getting mounted to the amp, these wires are going to come up and around. Here's all your motor plugs, the soft close plugs. This is your buzzer. Uh, if you have the optional foot sensor, there's a foot sensor connector. We won't be using those, so we'll just tie them off into the main harness. We can use them at a later date if you want to. For the power, I like to leave a little bit of a loop, so if you had to unplug it, you can. So I'm gonna zip tie everything to this mounting tab. Oh, we have some discussion. Okay. The other thing is to know which way your harnesses are going so you know how to route them. So we have two pigtails to come off. So this one goes into the lights. So we have to route this one to the trunk lid lights. That one's gonna go up and over. And this one splits into a Y. So this is the trunk signal. This is the, one, the harness that goes into the deck lid area. So you unplug the factory connector and you plug this in line. And this one This is the tailgate button. So this is the one that goes up through the harness into the, the tailgate for the push button. You may have to pull the connector off. Some of them come with the connector already off. Some of them you have to actually pull the wires out to snake it through the harness and then put the connector back on. If you have to take these off, make sure you note which pin wire color is in it so you don't mix them up when you put them back together again. Okay, so I have our pretty much our layout. I'm going to prep this to get, uh, this is going to be held on by these uh, double-sided pads to the bottom of our amp back here. So what I'm going to do is, don't need full length on one of them, one of these needs to be trimmed half. I'm just going to cut it in half. So one full and one half, I'll show you what I mean. Maybe just like that. You know, we need to do it on the upper half because it's going to overhang the bottom. There you go. Okay. So before we stick this in, I'm going to have all the wires plugged in on the bottom first so you can see them. And then we're going to tie up the select after the fact. So that's going to plug in like that. Now, these say left and right on here. Some, it just says actuator. And that's all it says. It doesn't say left or right on it. If it says left or right, I would put them left and right. Okay, now we have everything plugged in. Like I said, I'm gonna tie up the slack after the fact. So, some of these have the this little clip here. 
if you pull gently, you can get that clip to come out and move it back just out of the way for now. Okay, there's a lip or a um, bump in this amp. I'm gonna install it below that. As far off to the side as possible for clearance reasons. Like that. Wiggle it in. Now it's firmly set. Now on this side I didn't have a ton of slack, which is great. So I could just tuck it down and root it the way I need it to be routed. It'll be out of the way. Now the actuator on the right is the one I have a lot of slack, which is not a big deal. Okay, do that, get a cable tie. can't plug it back in it's not a big deal it's not the end of the world I know I cover that whole bit that's okay now this is a ground wire right here this is what we're gonna tie our ground into so I'm just gonna put a terminal on the end of this and then put it underneath that 10 millimeter bolt so here's our ground they do give you a terminal for it on the end but they also give you a lot of wire because these kits are kind of universal and I don't like all that wire. So if you have your own terminals and you, you know, you're know you handy with crimping stuff, um, just put a new terminal on it to the length you need it. So I'm gonna go about that long. I cut off all that. We don't need it. And these wires are double shielded so there's an outer layer and then an inner layer. heat shrink terminal so your power feed it's gonna go forward and then we have these other harnesses that we have to also snake so what I like to do is keep everything neat until they have to split off again this is my installation you can do it whichever way you want So this is for the beeper, we're gonna need that. It should stay out. This other one's for the foot sensor, we're not using. So I'm just gonna tie it up here so if we ever wanna add it, we can just add it fairly easy. So we're gonna install our beeper. I'll tuck this wire under. side tape on the back of this now this thing is re really really loud so you don't have to put it directly up at like eye level or anything I just stick this right here in the module and it's actually 
pretty loud being right there. Okay, I'm gonna zip tie these one more time. And then one harness is, two harnesses are going up this way. One's going through this one up here, this hole. Because this has to go into the trunk lid and into the interior cabin. And the third wire is going forward, which is the power feed, which is this solid black wire. A lot of cable. Go up that way with it for now. I'll get that in the back seat. Okay. So these two plugs are for the the trunk lights. So what we're going to do is route this harness. plug one into the light on this side and then that plastic trim we took off that goes over that's where this wire is going to hide up in there and it's going to go over the other trunk lid or the other light so this wire is a little bit long for where you want it to go but again you can always tie it off and the other one like I said it's going up in that hole so from this hole, the only way to grab the wiring is to go through here, to pull it through, and then once we pull the deck lid apart, we can pull the inner harness out that way. So we're going to take this gasket, harness gasket out, just by pulling that out like that so you have access. I do things a little differently, so these zip ties are special is they mount as well as like the mount to the trunklet and to the harness so I undo them what I pretty much did is I undid the little hanging tag in there with the pick I just lift up and undid it so I can reuse them now I'm not going to cut them by doing this it makes it a little easier to snake this harness you make it so much easier yeah And this one, so there's a plastic insert in here. I undo this as well. Just trying to reinstall it is a lot harder with that floating around. Okay, so what I'm going to do is open this up so I, I have access. We're going to stick these two harnesses. This one with the pigtail. And this is the one for the trunk lid. So this is the one that's actually going to go up the rubber grommet. This one's going to the interior. But it's just easier to stick them both in here for the moment. Might have to wiggle it around a little bit. Here's the trunk lid one. There we go. Now it's up in here. I'm not going to pull it through the hole because I'm going to pull the deck lid out, but you can see it's sitting right there. Makes it a lot easier to get at. We have to pull the deck lid out to get the connector underneath. Okay, so in order to get this rear deck lid off, uh, you have to take some stuff apart. So the side bolster has to come out. Fold this forward. And very carefully pull this outward. Like that. And lift it up. So next, we're going to remove the, I guess you can call it C-pillar, <laughs> C-pillar arch <laughs> back here. So 
pull, undo that clip. No, because there is an airbag back here, there's a tether. So this. Come on. There's a double tab at the back here. And then this, where this comes out, this has to be twisted. They make it complex so it doesn't just come off. So like it slides out. Usually it slides out. See it's a double double hook. It's just a challenge trying to get the yeah, it's trying to get it lined up where you can't see it. I never like taking these off. The other thing you could do too is leave it in there and take the clip off on the body, which I think we'll do it this time up here. So there's a couple little tabs in here. If you have a pick, you can undo the tabs. Like I said, you can It's the most overcomplicated clip ever. There we go. I'll show you why. Oh my god. It's four four locking tanks on either side of it. Yeah. And that goes, the clip goes in there and pushes the tangs out to lock it in. It's pretty much so when the airbag goes off, it doesn't, doesn't rocket this out. Right. And next you have to take this trim piece off. Well, actually you have to take this trim piece off, which overlays this trim piece. It's one. Oh. Two. And for people who like to geek out, there's another emergency loop back here. And the reason why it's right here is that's where the fire, fire department will cut to extricate. So they loop this whole harness back here. So if they cut anywhere back here, you're guaranteed to hit it. Fun tip. Next, we need to lift this up. So here's our trunk harness that I stunk through earlier. See this right here? So the hole is back here in the corner. But unfortunately, the trunk harness that goes out there is underneath this, this deck lid, so we still have to get underneath this to plug that in. So I gotta pull these out. One, and two. Okay, so there's one more clip back here. It's actually a hook. So what you have to do is lift this up and pull forward towards the front of the vehicle, I should say. Undo it. And then way back there in the back corner is where the connector is. So I'm going to tuck this guy back under the carpet so I can reach it under the carpet. We're not going to take this whole thing out because it's too much of a pain. We're just going to lift this up and do it underneath the carpet. Back here, the tab. It's easier to do it with a pick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the tab down and slide the connector up. I'm gonna take the trunk harness kit, put my hand on it. Take these two connectors. in here and the other one clips back into the factory connector. You 
You have to have nimble fingers to get in here. Right, yeah, exactly. That's why I had the connector upside down. Tuck that in here. Now I'll get this hook back in. See, there's the hook right here. There's a hole in the down and back. That locks it back in. So like I said, depending on the trunk kit, you may or may not have to do this. The other trunk kits, they go up through the trunk harness. This one, you have to access that. Next, we're going to put our little Christmas trees back in. One on both sides. Yep. We're going to put our trim pieces back on. Make sure that you tuck this harness down because you don't want this sticking up. This is one one tag you don't want to be gleaming through your window. So these hooks have to line up. Once you get them all lined up, then this slides backwards to lock in. Mm. What's that silver thing? This is the uh, the radio tuner. I was actually just looking at that. This is actual radio tuner. If you look at it, it actually says radio on it. Not a cool fact. The radio is not in the dashboard. It's it's right here. It's communicated through a, a bus. To the front. Next panel. Oop! Had that upside down. Goes like. that in. Get the carpet out of the way. Down. Now we have this crazy trim panel put back in. He said this has to clip in first. This one on this side actually came off together with it. I'm not going to try fighting that to get that apart, but this should just clip back in. Thing about doing trim, it's all about finesse. Make sure it's lined up before you start smacking trim. See? Once you have it lined up, everything goes in nice. And make sure your gasket is not tucked under that. Well, nice and firmly back on. Now, now that that's plugged in, we have to get our power wire forward, which is tucked up behind this carpet. So what I'm gonna do is just pull this one little clip out real quick. And I can pull this carpet forward. There's our power wire right here. This is why prep work is so nice. So now to get 12 volt, we're not going over the front. I'm going to show you another way to get 12 volts in these cars. First, we're going to go under the seat bracket. Don't go over it, go under it because you don't want to get pinched. Okay, and I'm going to route it with this main harness right here. Okay, I'm just going to 
zip tie that to this harness and then we're gonna go down underneath the seat. I'm not sure where to tie in. So I zip tie the, the harness here. It's going down to the seat. We can put this bolster back in. This bolster has a, a U on it. It was a round seat pin. There's a couple of tabs you have to line up. There's one back here. It's kind of a, there we go. And then there's a side clip here. You need to slide it into the body. And the last clip right up there. And that's in. So now we got that all assembled up here. Uh, I'm gonna put the bump stop bottom pieces in. Uh, if you want to take a note, uh, these do rust. These the, these panels are uh, steel, so because of that, when I go put these back on, I usually like to put something on them so they don't uh, they don't rust. I'm going to use some anti-seize. Uh, you can use grease. You can use whatever. I'm just going to use anti-seize so it just doesn't get stuck for next time. You don't have to go crazy. Just enough to coat it. And these don't have to be ridiculously tight. There's no reason for that. Um, I'm just going to use my little tool here just to get a little better grip on it, just to snug it up. And that's it. No ratchet, none of that. We're going to do that again to the other one. Let's put a little bit in the hole and just thread it in. So next we're going to do is snake the tailgate button harness through this, this harness to put the button up on the trunk lid. Uh, some people will install it in the carpet back here. I don't like doing that because if you're somebody that uses your trunk a lot and you put a lot of big stuff here, it's behind whatever you're, you're putting your stuff on. So either your stuff will be in the way of the button or it could push the button. Um, things can happen. I, I, don't, I don't like it down there. Plus it's not really a clean look. Um, I like it up here so you can see it from a distance. So I'm gonna snake this through the, the rubber, the stock rubber harness. Problem is this connector is too big to go through the harness. So what you have to do is you have to depin this, and I'll show you how to do that. So the way to do this, you have to get a pick, push this tab down, and slide out this yellow plastic piece. And this is its uh, locking. So you slide that out. Now I took a picture of this, so I know which wire goes where. Let's separate these a little bit. I'm going to lift up the little feet in here. Bring that back so you can see it. Lift that up and then pull slightly on the pin. And pull it out. Like I said, depending on the kit, some of them are already deep in and you snake the harness and then put the connector on. This one, for some reason, it's already together. There. So it makes it a lot easier to pull that through the harness. Next, I'm going to snake a piece of wire through this just to make it easier pulling the harness through. So I just got a piece of, it's like household electrical wire. It's a little it's a piece of copper, but stiff. So pushing through it makes it easy. And what else helps is giving it a little lubricant. I like to use glass cleaner. And the reason because is it's slippery until it dries. And it dries fairly quickly and doesn't leave residue everywhere. And you can use a lot of it and not worry about hurting paint or wires or anything like that.
Okay. I'm gonna try and do straighten this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pete, good. Give it a little wiggle and voila. Okay, that's good. What we do is take our other end, bring it around the hinge, not through the hinge, so you pretty much follow the factory wiring harness. And what you do is you just tape these together with some quality electrical tape. And make sure you cover the terminals so they don't catch on anything when you're pulling it through. Best thing to do, take your harness, loop it up on the roof, straighten it out as straight as possible. Where's the glass clear? Right. Don't keep stealing my stuff. Yeah, spray it back in. So, Now you know why I'm using glass cleaner, not some kind of lubricant, because you can just easily wipe that right off the window. Okay, now we're gonna pull that through. I'm just gonna guide it. It's nice to have a helper to do this, but I have done this by myself. It's a little more difficult. Okay, so we have the harness that pulled through. Slack. And pretty much just run it back to like it was from the factory. Okay. I remember when I undid these. And I can read put them back and reuse them. Like it never happened. Just like that. And now, what you do is you put the rubber grommet on this plastic insert first before you do push this back in the trunk. Makes life a lot easier for the install. There's a groove that this plastic piece has to sit in. So that's ready to clip back in. Now what you do is remove this trim piece so you can snake this harness up, drill a hole in here for the, the button to close it. You use the trim tool, kind of going through the backside a little bit if you can. These are very, very tight. They use an exorbitant amount of clips on these. Oh. Try not to damage it. There we go. Okay, we got that off. Next, we're going to snake our wiring the rest of the way through. Install this, you just clip back in. Done. I route this with the stock harness right up here. And I'll tie up the slack here because the button's going to go right around here. So now I'm going to reinstall these. Like I said, the easiest thing to do is take a picture of this. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Let's 
throw in there, lock that back in, and you're good. We can then tie up the slack. Um, I want to secure this to the factory harness first before I tie it up. which should have enough and the switch itself has a pigtail on it okay so here's the button I gave you for the kit yeah. with the pigtail so you got a big pigtail on that and they give you a drill bit as well to drill the hole so we know we're about we're gonna put the switch around here somewhere. So we just need to mark it out on the plastic housing and drill it out. So we decided we're gonna put it around here. So we just pick the center of this. Here's the nut so you can get an idea of how big it's gonna be. The thing to do is to watch out for the little ribs in the back here. Just make the install easier, drilling, putting the nut on it. So we'll line it up. Just to have an idea of where you're gonna go. I'm gonna grab the drill bit. Make sure this is somewhat centered. Okay. okay so now we got our hole drilled. There's a side tape backered on this. I'm going to cram that in there. Line this up nice. And stick it on there and then put that note on the back. Okay. Eh, beautiful. And just reinstall the hatch cover, or the trunk cover, I should say. I'm so used to the Model S. Okay, I'm going to put this back in. Okay, make sure it's clipped all the way around. No gaps. There we go. And it's in. Okay, so here we are from the inside of the trunk through the back seat. You can see how our latch is off, our pin is off from the latch itself. So we need to adjust this. Crack it loose, just move it over so it lines up nice. Now like I said, this, this moves, this moves up and down for the soft close. So it doesn't have to be tight has to be able to latch. So what you want to do is bring this up. Let me open it up. And then just snug it down nice. So now the latch pin is in alignment. And that latches. Now it's gonna be a little loose because this is gonna soft close in, but we don't have the power hooked up yet. So leave that open. And let's connect the power. Okay, so here we are in the back seat. In order to get power, we need to get underneath the seat. So to release the seat, there's a lever underneath here. You have to feel around for the mounting block. There it is. What you have to do is from the outside, push this way with the plastic lever. So towards the inside, it releases. See, there's the lever. See that? Do that on that side too. We just lift the seat up and out. Now, if you have heated seats, there are connectors back here. And do this one. And there's another one on that corner as well. There we go. Just 
things like that. Yeah. There we go. So here we are in the back. And this is the penthouse. This is where all the high voltage stuff is. But if we take this little guy off, there's a 12 volt power and there's a 12 volt ground right here. This actually goes all the way up to the battery in the front, the front trunk. So you can tag into power right here. So now I have my power cable. The problem is this cable is way too long. I'm not leaving this all underneath here. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the ground is I'm gonna cut it to length, put my own connector on it. And if you don't have connectors or you can't do it, you can you know bundle this up like this and zip tie or something, but I like to keep my wires to the proper length. So I bring this up around here and cut that. I don't need all that. And I'm gonna use my fuse, the fuse they give you and tie it into that. Okay, since I cut that, I don't have another one of these. So I'm gonna cut this one too. And I'm just gonna put a buck connector on it instead. I love the heat shrinks. This looks great. Okay, so make sure your fuse is installed. Put the cap on. Okay, I'm going to feed this under this bracket here. So I left a little slack on here so you can tie this up neatly under here like that. Tie it in. Now, to loosen this uh, nut, don't do it while the car is still alive. So you can see our screen still on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and shut down the, the power down the MCU, which will power down the vehicle. So you're going to hit the menu. Yes. Then you go underneath service. Oh no, my fault. Safety security. You move that power off. Power off. And you wait. So now, right now, everything's powering down. You can hear the pumps winding down. You also look at the lights. The light, yep, the lights will start to shut off underneath the dash. And eventually, you'll hear the contactors open up. But what we're going to do is we're going to undo the logic connector. And that's the contactors right there. The car just shut off. So now I'm Take a 13 millimeter. Now this is still alive with 12 volt from up front. You don't want to ground it anywhere. So undo that. Slide this in. Okay, slide that under. Tighten it back down. Turn your logic connector back on. like right there. This can tuck underneath. back on and do that make sure your fuse holder is not pinned underneath it like that and now we put the rear seat back in and we're ready to test the trunk unit okay we set the trunk height and we're going to set the speed Let's 
happens. Speed one, two, three, four, five, six. So now that we know that our trunk works and everything's happy, the latch works, we're gonna put the trunk plastic trim piece in last. The reason why is you wanna make sure that this was adjusted right and there are no issues of binding. Put this trunk up. Sometimes the gasket's easier to just use a piece of trim tool. You right? Okay. On the load floor. And just because we can, we're going to close it again. Beautiful. The other cool thing about this kit, they did something to the trigger in the back. So it says it keeps cycling between open and open. And the reason for this is you can actually close it from a touch screen. And now it's closing in the back. So because of that, you can open and close at the same button. Whereas some other kits, you can only open it, but you can't close it. So that's what makes this kit a little bit different and a little bit better than some.